Okay, so we're caught in the matrix. Um, as I was saying to you beforehand, normally I meet everyone beforehand. So for anyone listening, Tisha and I met via Zoom like 18 seconds ago. So I'm glad we're meeting. Thank you for doing this. You're welcome, Connor. Um, so yeah, as I was saying, I just got off the phone with Charles Rosa. And he was like, yo, man, me and Tisha, we go way back, way back in the day. We were the first amateurs in Florida to come up. We each had like 10 belts. And then we started training together. So how, how long ago was that when you were coming up in Florida with Charles? Probably like back to 2010. 11 somewhere there when we were amateurs still so yeah about 2010 probably 12 years ago long time do you we miss both florida were like the best at our do i miss florida uh not really just my family there i, I like colorado a lot where whereabouts in colorado are you the springs uh both the springs and denver in between both okay cool yeah i um I was out there a couple of years ago. We spent time in Frisco. Do you know where that is? Yeah, it's a few hours away. That's a nice place. Okay, word. Yeah, I just like, if you're into skiing and snowboarding, Colorado is the shit. Like, you do it year-round. Like. For sure. It's cold a lot of the months, but the snow hasn't been that great the, these last few years, to be honest. But it is so, one of the best places to go and board. So what mountain are you guys near where you're at? Pikes Peak would be the closest. Okay. So are you still getting up on the board right now? Or are you totally locked in on camp? Oh, in terms of boarding, I'm sorry. We like to go to Cooper. Uh, Ski Cooper, it's smaller. But they're, they're all within like two hours, three hours from us. Um, they're not far at all. Uh, but no, I'm not doing anything because I'm not like someone who grew up snowboarding. So I'm still very much so beginner. So I can easily get hurt. So no, <laughs> I'm just training and uh, working my butt off. Okay, word. But you have gotten out there on the board and tested it out and tried it, right? Oh, yeah, for sure. Probably about like eight times now. Okay, cool. Now, what's that like they, going from like a fighter to extreme sports? Is it the same rush for you? Uh, yes and no. Um, I'm at the point now where like I know it's coming at me. I fought them all. So it's more excited, nervous. But the first time I snowboarded, I literally was like in a squat the whole time because like I fell so many times that I started just wanting to fall, uh, you know, softer. <laughs> so I just bent down the whole time. So when I would fall, it'd be like half the way down, you know, already. So you were just zooming in squat mode down the whole mountain. Yeah, my, my legs were on fire. Mm -hmm. Nice. Well, um, so we're what, like 10 days, two weeks out from your next fight, right? So are you, are you at weight now? Are you like starving yourself right now? What's going on? No, I'm not at weight, but I'm not starving myself. No, I'll uh, cut weight once I get to um, Florida. I was like remembering where it was. Yeah, I, I don't cut a lot of weight, so it's not bad for me, but I am eating healthier. I started yesterday. Okay, so you're so you don't ever like do a strict cut. Like, do you sit around like one twenty, one twenty five, and then just cut a little before the fight? Correct. Yeah. Okay. Cool. I'm I'm, I'm grateful because even the little bit that I cut, I I'm a baby. Now, what does that cut look like for you normally? Are you doing like a water cut, sodium cut, or are you just like peeling back on calories? Uh, mainly it's I just do like a. 20 minute bath and then I wrap up in like a mummy wrap for like 45 minutes and I do a little bit of a workout before there to break my sweat so just like taking it out of my body I guess depleting my body of the water at the end so you've never had any of those like super extreme cuts where dudes are like literally passing out dying because they're so emaciated no no I would I would probably quit or go to a different weight class yeah, Charles is like, I remember him explaining some like pretty vicious stories of him getting like heart palpitations. And in our movie, I did a water cut and I just couldn't imagine doing it again. You just like feel like a zombie. It's craziness. Um, How much did you cut? So I right now I'm like 205. I think I cut for the scene to about 165. 
what, where, how, how long did you start? Like how much of actual water did you cut? Like 10 pounds? I would say I, in the two week span, I probably cut around 23 pounds. Of water? Well, weight too. I didn't yeah. eat very much. Uh, I kind of approached it stupidly. Yeah, that, that sounds scary. I don't know about that, but I'm not I, a diet. I looked so ripped. That sounds scary. I, I think you may have looked like you were sick. <laughs> 205, You're probably right. 165. That's, that's uh, 40 pounds. Yeah, it's intense. Um, okay, for anyone tuning in, can you just give a, a quick synopsis of who you are and what you do? My name is Tisha Torres. They call me the Tiny Tornado, UFC straw weight, 115 pound weight class, currently ranked number seven in the world. About to take on the number five, April 9th, UFC 273. I grew up doing martial arts and just went from karate to kickbox and MMA and got really good at it. And now I can do it as a career. Now, do you remember any of your time in Massachusetts? Uh, yeah, I mean, I grew up going there in the summers. My dad, uh, we'd see him in the summers and I'd live in Florida uh, for the school years. Oh, okay, word. I, I thought like you had maybe spent like five or six years in Mass and then moved down to Florida, but you were coming up here pretty consistently as a kid. Yeah, well, I, I we moved like when I was five. Um, but then at one point, like in second grade, we thought we were gonna live there again. So we were there for like half the year, then we went back, and then uh we just were there for the summers. So yeah, I've grown up there my whole life. And I I go back there a lot because my brother, my sister, and my dad live there. All in Fall River. Nice. Okay. Word. Um, huge Portuguese population in Fall River. Are you part Portuguese? I am Portuguese and Puerto Rican. Oh, dope. Where, what part of Puerto Rico is your family from? They're from Maunabo. Okay. So like, um, I was just there in December. I, that's like Southeast. I could not tell you that. I've only been to Puerto Rico twice. And last time we went, we did go to Maunabo uh, to bring my grandma there to visit her friend. Uh, so it was it was close enough to drive from San Juan. I remember that. Okay, cool. Did you like it when you went? Yeah, it was cool. The first time I went was like 2010. I was a lot younger and I went for like a jiu-jitsu competition. But when I went uh, last year, or I'm sorry, it was the year before. It was right when COVID started. Is when I, right before COVID is when I went with my family. Um, it was awesome because I'd never been on a trip with my family like that. And we stayed for a week and we got to enjoy and I got to see my grandma's where she like grew up and stuff. So it was cool. Now, were you staying in San Juan or down in Mount Nabo? No, in San Juan. Yeah, no, we were, we were doing the tourist stuff. Yeah. The resort life. Yeah. When you drove down from San Juan to Mount Nabo, I think it's in the Southern point where, did you go through the mountains at all? <sighs> yes. Cause then, uh, I was, I went to the jungle too. When I was there, I went to shit. I literally like ran through the jungle in, in, in sandals. Cause I wanted to go see a water right before I left. Cause, uh, we didn't have time to go, but I thought it was called El Yunque. Yes. We went in El Yunque. Yep. So nice. Like, <laughs> yes. It was beautiful, but I didn't have a lot of time there. I literally just ran so I can get to, till we found water. And then I turned around and went back in the rental car. Now, given your uh, training schedule, how do you plan vacations now? Like, do you, do you segment yourself a vacation every year or do you plan on traveling every year? Oh, I love traveling. It's just very hard. Um, I have to reschedule a lot of things often. Uh, actually, I have a trip. I was planning um, like two weeks after the fight. I've already rescheduled it twice. Now I'm going to reschedule it a third time, I think. It's just, it's hard because... Um, you know, you never know when you're going to fight. And uh, you, sometimes you have to cancel big things. Or you can't make certain things. But actually last year when I, or sorry, two years ago, when I went to Puerto Rico with my family, I was like thinking, am I going to go? Because I was scheduled to fight in Columbus, but then um, COVID hit. So they canceled it. So I was really glad that I still went on the trip with my family. because I would have been super pissed if I didn't go and then it got canceled. So sometimes you just like, like you think, oh man, I can't take this weekend off, but then you do it. And it's just like a really good mental reset. And that's how I feel lately about things. Like, you know, we only live once and yes, I'm a professional fighter, but 
I do need a weekend off, you know, during fight camp. So I'm not opposed to taking, you know, an entire, sorry, weekend off for five days and, you know, mental, mentally resetting my, my system. Now, do those trips normally, are those like, like day trips out of Colorado? Are you going somewhere else in Colorado? Um, usually just, uh, I like to stay in Colorado because there's so many beautiful places to go and you can go on a nice weekend trip within like five, six hours of here. And, uh, actually last fight camp, um, or actually I think it was Raquel's, we just like go, you can go to Moab in maybe like, I think six hours or something. So something small like that, I'm definitely down to do. I'm sure there's incredible hiking around you too. Oh yeah, for sure. You can get into the mountains, you know, from Colorado Springs within 20 minutes in Denver. It's like 45 minutes to an hour for a good spot. How far are you from Leadville where you're at? Oh, Leadville. That's familiar. I don't think, I don't think that far. Um, I couldn't tell you exactly. I'd be lying if I guess. It's not far. They, yeah, I, um, I ran my first ultra marathon a couple months ago. And so I got my okay. sights on, I got my sights on doing one in Leadville next. They got a wicked famous race over there, but it's, there's an incredibly strict lottery system to get in. So I'm praying I do. Well, hopefully you get in Colorado is, is really big for, you know, for like outdoorsy stuff like that. A lot of crazy people, athletic people here. Yeah, I was going to say, does has that provided a benefit for you, any of the altitude training out there? Oh, yeah, for sure. I mean, I came from no altitude in Florida to here. Um, so my cardio is already good now. I'm just assuming it's a lot better. <laughs> and if I, you know, ever had a fight in Denver, I'd be cool. Or if I went and fought in Mexico City again, I'd be down for it. The first time I fought there it was terrible. Uh, coming from sea level to fight at altitude was not fun. Mexico City has elevation. I didn't know that. Yep. Okay. Was that the one Charles said you guys were on the card, card together at? It was like your first UFC yes. fights? Yes. So he knows the deal. Yeah, he was saying that, like, he had really fond memories of that first UFC fight because, like, you guys kind of went into it, like, really mm-hmm. wide-eyed and feeling like, oh, my God, this is amazing. Yeah, uh, that was my first like uh, fight outside of the Ultimate Fighter. I did fight once in the UFC before that, um, <clears throat> after the Ultimate Fighter. Uh, but yeah, that was a big fight for us. Um, in, for, was it? I think it was my first time fighting out of the country for for the UFC. Um, I'd fought out of the country for kickboxing before. Uh, and, you know, it was a big fight card to be on. Um, yeah, it was. You know, the, the starting of our career now, what is it like 14 to now? Oh no, I fought in Mexico in 16, I think. So uh, like six years later and we're still doing it. So I think we're doing something right. Hey, you're a vet now. How does it feel, man? You're like, you're like the godmother. Uh, good. Uh, it's about my time to run it for that belt. So <laughs> working hard. Yeah. So if you pull back this dub, um in the next 10 days what does that mean for you like do you think you're going to get a title shot after this if you pull back a win on this or are you going to line up another fight do you have your sights on somebody uh I think that I definitely could potentially line up a title fight down the line if I was like knock her out or something if not a win I think I would need one more fight because there are girls ahead of me that um I know deserve a title shot too. So I'm realistic about things, but I definitely would like to fight another, you know, top opponent. All your losses come from people in the top, like from girls in the top three, four right now. Right. Yes. Okay. Nice. So, I mean, no bad losses, man, but you're, but this would be four straight for you, correct? Yes. This will be a fourth win for me. Okay. Let's get it. Nice. Now, what have you been doing training specifically for this, like different than other fights? Is it pretty much the same? Are you doing the same stuff with your partner? Uh, yeah, the same. Well, obviously, you know, jujitsu has been more in the forefront than in the past for my fights, but nothing really different. I like to focus on me and what I'm good at and, you know, just um, sharpen the tools everywhere, to be honest. Now, 
from what I, the research I did gather in the last six hours, you and your fiance are on the same card, right? Yeah, she's on the same card as me. She just got on the card like two days ago. That's awesome. Uh, yeah, we fought in the same card, uh, like I think three or four times before. The last time was during COVID uh, and we both won. So that was a good thing. So I look forward to doing that again. So will you guys train together the next like nine, 10 days specifically? No, no. She's uh, training with bigger people. But but there's she a benefit. helped me about the fight camp. It's just now, since she knows she has a fight, she needs to train with some bigger people. But there's a benefit for you training with larger fighters as well, correct? Oh, yeah. Like, she's she still spars me and everything like that and helps me. And I have, like, specific training partners. Um, but in terms of her getting ready for the fight, no. She needs somebody bigger than me. Okay, cool. Noted. Um, so one, th- one thing I was talking with Charles about is, to be honest, I've just been really fascinated by the UFC as a company. Like, brand-wise, it's just, like, fascinating to follow. Now, he was talking a lot about mid-level contracts. And he was like, you know, there's, like, a – uh, there's a dissatisfaction for a lot of fighters. They just feel like they're not paid enough. It's come a long way though, right? Since you guys started, like fighters are more equally compensated now than you guys were in the Mexico city fight in 2015. When you say equally compensated, what do you mean by that? I mean, you guys get paid more fair now than you did back then. In more overall fair. sense, in an overall sense, yes, probably, but in an outside perspective, in terms of like the UFC being the NFL or the NBA, no, we get paid pennies to, you know, compared to them because, you know, we're the best in our sport, yet we aren't getting paid like these other sports. But I won't complain because I'm getting paid more than I would if I was doing another another career that I wished or desired to do. So, but yeah, I finally, I feel like I'm getting paid better. Could I still get paid even better than I am now? Yeah. And my next contract, I will, you know, fight for that. That's Charles phrased it the same exact way. He compared it to the NFL and the NHL. And he was saying like fighters get paid. I mean, athletes in the NFL and NBA will get paid like 60% of the revenue, but UFC fighters get paid like 15% of the revenue. Something like that. Right. Uh, probably, or maybe even less. Yeah. Wow. Now, do you negotiate your fights yourself, like what you get paid, or do you have an agent? Uh, I, I'm self-managed, so myself. Nice. What are those negotiations like? That must be kind of fun. Uh, they're not bad. The last two haven't been bad. Before that, they were like, eh. But now, you know, I'm at a point where I've won enough fights and have been in enough fights, talked to enough fighters that um, I know a lot of what's going around. So. It's not bad these days, but my next one, I, I definitely hope to get a much bigger number. Now, do you ever think when your time is done fighting and however long, like you would want to maybe oversee like the business end for younger fighters? Eh, I don't know about that. I definitely might give back some of my martial arts skills, uh, but I don't know if I'd want to manage any fighters. Maybe run a gym? Yeah, maybe run a gym. Uh, my passion lies within uh, sharing my my passion with kids and women. Um, so yeah, that's definitely a thought in my mind. Okay, cool, awesome. Um, I know you're on a tight schedule here because you're training, so I don't want to draw this on too long. I know you're a busy, lady. I'm glad we met. Um, now, one more thing. So in terms of diet right now, are you sticking to like a strictly paleo type diet or is there anything specific you're doing? No, I I honestly eat what I want. Since since I don't cut a lot of weight, I I like to enjoy myself, but I am eating better than I normally would. I snack a lot. So I'm just, you know, uh, scaling back down in the snacks. Um, But like I have food on the counter over there uh i have some barbecue chicken broccoli and some potatoes so nothing bad tastes good so as soon as we wrap this up myself uh, yeah so as soon as you wrap this up you're gonna go house the barbecue chicken yeah i'll I'll finish it um but i mean i had kudoba this weekend so like i'm not the best with diet to be honest like that's why i said like if i had to cut any more weight i probably would fight a different weight class i like food 
a little queso in the, the Qdoba or what? Oh yeah, I get the the big side of queso. Yeah. For myself. <laughs> yeah, I've been like recently, I've been feeling like Qdoba is probably superior to Chipotle. I don't know if you feel that way. Uh it just depends. I like Chipotle's bowls. I'm really basic. Rice, beans, and uh chicken. And then Chipotle, I'm sorry, Qdoba, I like their quesadillas. But what I really like, what we don't have here, is Willie's. And they have that in Georgia. When I lived in Georgia, they had Willie's. Uh, it's like what the same Willis? type of thing. Yeah. And their case was really good. It's like the same thing as, do you know what Moe's is? Moe's Southwest. Of course, yeah, Southwest. Okay, yeah. So it's like a Moe's. Those two I really like. Mainly, honestly, because of the queso. Chavole has a queso, but it's fake. It's not real cheese. I agree. Now, have you have you ever tried the Chick Fil A grilled chicken tender nuggets? Not the grilled one, no. I, I just get the the bad ones for you, the the ones deep fried. <laughs> the fried ones. <laughs> yeah, I get the eight count with fries and honey mustard. I love Chick Fil A. I just got even though they're Chick- density people. Are they? Yeah, very much so. I did not know that. Yeah, they are. That's okay, though. Their food's good. I'm still going to eat there. Now, do you have a favorite spot in I didn't, eat, I didn't eat Chick-fil-A. In Massachusetts, yeah, I like Carvela's. It's in Fall River. It's a Portuguese place. That's my favorite spot. Little, you know, mom pot place. Carvela's, okay. Business shout out. All right, well, hey, um, I'm glad we met. I appreciate you doing this last minute. And um, again... This was fun. Uh, we'll probably drop it next week and best of luck in your well, fight. Thanks. Tag me and I'll share it on my stuff too. For sure. And I'll get um, an address from you on email and I'll ship you out a shirt. Oh, sweet. Thank you. And good luck with your next uh, movie. I hope you get it done. Thank you very much. And I'll, uh, I'll shoot you the link to our last one. If you and your fiance want to watch it. Yeah. What is it about? It's post-apocalyptic. Okay. Were you in it? I think you'll see me in there. Okay. (laughs) All right. Have a good one. All right. Hey, great to meet you and best of luck. Bye. Thank you.